There's a new ring announcer. I don't think I did not recognize him. He says, here's your new Intercontinental Champion, Shawn Michaels. And it was 1993, so this actually was news to the fans. There had been a title change. They go crazy. Out comes Shawn with his shiny new Intercontinental belt and his shiny new bodyguard. A very tall fella in a tracksuit. They made no mention of Marty Jannetty. They made no mention of... Actually, they did later on. Well, we found out that he he won the belt at a house show or whatever. But uh, also, no, Diesel didn't have a name. No. They called him the Great Wall of China. Yes. They called him, and he was just there. The insurance policy and the bodyguard. So painfully uncharismatic. It was astonishing. He was a tall fella. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We we have Scott Hall on the show, and he's just overflowing with charisma. Yeah. Yeah. And then we got Nash on the show, and like, oh, Moss would be critiquing this guy being a shitty giant. So Sean crashes the announcers. They're trying to run down the card. He steals the show, literally, to talk about himself and his new championship and his insurance policy and his bodyguard. And the announcers barely have time when he's done to mention we have Billy Gunn and Rick Steiner versus Fat 2 and IRS in this show. We go to commercial. We come back. There's no graphics. There's no intro. And the announcers are actually dead quiet for a while. And um, by this point, I was convinced Sean actually did go into business for himself. It was and, weird. And was crashed like, the announce desk yeah, where to the plug hell out were stuff. They? So... It's uh, a Shawn Michaels squash match. Uh, they're talking about Shawn Michaels versus Crush. It was already scheduled to be a King of the Ring match because they had a King of the Ring qualifier that had a some mess finish. Uh, but now that Shawn's Intercontinental Champion, that will be a title match against Crush, a King of the Ring. Shawn hits the top rope elbow. Macho Man in commentary says, gee, I wonder where we got that one. And then Shawn wins. You're the retired, p- brother. Shawn wins with the pile driver. Yeah, this match was, it was all right. I mean... There was nothing to write home about. There was nothing exceptional. If you like to see Shawn Michaels doing squash matches, it was fine. And this, I mean, this jobber was miles beyond. Uh, Ross Greenberg. Yeah, Ross Greenberg. Oh, mm-hmm. my God. That guy Happily was named. fucking terrible. <laughs> His lockup was horrendous. Everything I did, he did was horrendous. He was one horrendous jobber. Harken back to the days Oh. Of, NWA World Championship Wrestling. Oh, there's more to come. They got guys off the street. Oh, there's more to come on that front. There's one coming up that's... Believe you me, I got a lot to say about that fellow. Shawn Michaels had a sweet pile driver, though. Yeah. Man. The very last King of the Ring report. Gene says, this will be the first ever King of the Ring. Which is not true. What in the fuck was he talking about? It's the first pay-per-view. But it goes back to 1985, off and on. I looked up the I looked up the uh, final matches in King of the Rings before this year. Don Morocco defeated the Iron Sheik. That sounds terrible. Mm. Harley Race versus Pedro Morales is fascinating because it's like a decade after they were both reigning world champions for years. Randy Savage defeated King Kong Bundy. Ted DiBiase defeated Randy Savage, and in the final pre pay per view King of the Ring, Bret Hart defeated IRS. So the rest of the card, you know by now, Hulk Hogan versus Yokozuna, the King of the Ring tournament, and Shawn Michaels versus Crush. And then Gene gets an urgent update in his ear. There are developments on your end, Vince McMahon. So Shawn's back. He has taken over the show. He crashes the announce desk to bitch about how he has to defend this title already. He hasn't even been champion 24 hours. He should be on the beach drinking a blue Hawaiian, not in the ring wrestling a 300-pound Hawaiian. And he promises that he and his Great Wall of China are not backing down. You know, it is it is one thing for WWE to not acknowledge folks that come in from other promotions, etc. I mean, they didn't mention Vinny Vegas, for example. Nope. Or Oz. But, I mean, it's one thing to, to not Blaster. acknowledge history outside of your own promotion. Uh, but to have the balls to say we've never had a fucking King of the Ring before. When we had King Haku and King Harley Race and the Macho King Randy Savage, not all of which actually won the King of the Ring, but it was all built around the idea that there had been a King of the Ring tournament, and there were kings of the ring. But goddamn, this is the first ever King of the Ring tournament here. 1993. No offense to anyone named Bert. But when no. you spell it with a U, it's much worse. Vinny, you got to go to NXT, and your name is Bert, okay? <laughs> you can either spell it B-E-R-T, or B-U-R-T. You're going to look at both of those. You're going to go E for sure. Yeah. 
Right, Craig? Craig knows. Yeah, because, like, it's like I drank so much I burnt. You know? <laughs> what? First it was Narcissus. Okay. But then later it changed to The Narcissist. Yes. With a T. Yes. But that wasn't Narcissist. That was a Narcissist. The Narcissist. No! The Narcissist. Who cares? <laughs> Bert. Yeah. yeah. Bert Narcissist. <laughs> Bert, like, Bert. Bert. I'm sorry. I need to recover from Bert Narcissist. He's such a narcissist, he kept the name Bert. <laughs> yeah. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.